Hello. Today we will continue our discussion of the wave equation in one spatial dimension. We'll be talking about such notions like domain of dependence of a solution, region of influence of an interval, and lastly we'll be talking about generalization of d'Alembert formula that we had for homogeneous wave equation to the non-homogeneous case. So we'll be talking also about d'Alembert formula for the non-homogeneous wave equation. Okay, so let us recall how it was for homogeneous one. So here is the homogeneous wave equation in one spatial dimension. And we were discussing Cauchy problem for this. So we were asking for existence and uniqueness of a solution u of x of t such that u at x at time 0 was some given function and the time derivative of u at x and 0 was some other given function. So this was a Cauchy problem and I tried to convince you before that this Cauchy problem has unique solution and the solution is unique because there is even a formula for it. So a formula for the solution of this problem u at point x0 t0 was simply given by means of a backward wave plus forward wave averaged plus one half times c an integral x0 minus ct0 x0 plus ct0 g of s ds so this integral was in the interval from x0 minus ct0 to x0 plus ct0. So that, that's the solution to this Cauchy problem. And the solution is given up by this formula, which actually is called D'Alembert formula. So let's look at this formula closer. So here is our x t plane and here is our wave equation with the initial conditions given by this and we have a formula for value of a solution at at the point x0 t0 okay and this formula tells us that this value of a function u at this point is actually given in terms of the initial values of function u and its time derivative at t equal to zero. So let's look closer on which part of the data given in the entire line t equal to zero the solution at x zero t zero depends. Okay, so we know that there are some distinguished curves at the plane xt, which are called characteristics. So let, let, let us look at two characteristics passing through the point x0, t0. So there is this characteristic, 
and this characteristic, this one is given by an equation x minus ct. This line passes through point x0 t0, so it is constant, but this constant is precisely equal x0 minus ct0. And this one is given by x plus ct equal constant, but since this line pass, passes through the point x0 t0, so this constant is equal x0 plus ct0. Okay. So now, if you look at this point here and this point, so this point here is a point of intersection of this line when t is equal to 0. So the value of the x coordinate at this point is just we have to put t equals 0 here. So it is x is equal to x0 minus ct0. Likewise, if we just take this line, this characteristic, it intersects t equals 0 line at point when here t is equal to 0. So the coordinate of this point is x0 plus ct0. So we see that associated with this point at which we have value of the solution to the Cauchy problem, that through this point we see the pass these two characteristics producing a triangle here. So there is some triangle here. And this triangle is called characteristic triangle of the solution associated with the point x0 t0. So given a point here, given this Cauchy problem, we have this triangle. And this triangle consists of its base, which I just write in red here. And this base of this triangle is an interval on the line t equals 0, and this interval starts at x0 minus ct0 and ends at x0 plus ct0. And now when we look, when we look at the solution at this point, we see that the solution of this point depends on the following thing. It depends on the point x0 plus ct0, so it depends on this point here. It depends on point x0 minus ct0, so it depends on the point here. And eventually, the solution depends on an integral from this point to this point along the red line from the function g, g of x. So actually, the value at my function u at this point depends from nothing else but the color part interval on the line t equals 0. This actually means that whatever value this function f and g has beyond this green-red interval, the solution at this point will be the same. So I can change initial data here at this part and this part in whatever manner I want. It will not affect the value of my solution at this point because the value of this solution at this point depends only on this green red interval. So the value of my function u of x0 t0 depends only on my initial data on the interval, let's say b from x0 minus ct0 to x0 plus ct0. This interval b, which is just the base of this triangle, is called 
domain of dependence of the solution u at x0 t0 so b is by definition the domain of dependence of the solution u at a point x0 t0 because the solution u at point x0 t0 depends only on the initial data on this interval b so it is why this interval b is called the domain of dependence of the solution at x0 t0 okay so that's the first notion that i would like you to memorize which is associated with the solution of the Cauchy problem of the one-dimensional wave equation. So we just get this notion because it is really D'Alembert formula that tells us that the solution in here depends only on its domain of dependence. Okay? We can now try to reverse this story. So suppose now that we have an initial data given on some interval a to b on the t equals zero axis. So suppose that you are given an initial data only on some interval at t equals zero okay and now you're asking the question which points on the xt plane are affected by this initial data for the cauchy problem for the one-dimensional wave equation So it's sort of like reverse problem to this what we had before. Before we had a point on xt plane and we were asking by which data this point was affected. By which data on t equals zero axis this point was affected. And this, is, this point is affected by the data on its domain of dependence that is the base of the characteristic triangle and this characteristic triangle is just made by the uh, characteristics emanating from point x0 t0 here we have the reverse problem here we have a data at some interval and we are asking which part of xt plane will be influenced by the data at the interval a and b when we consider the solution of our wave equation note that if the data here at a and b is something and beyond a to the left and beyond b to the right it is zero then the data is not continuous and because it is not continuous the this discontinuity in the data is propagating by the wave equation along the characteristics so there is a characteristic here and there is a characteristic here Characteristic emanating from point B will be just the characteristic X minus CT equal B. And characteristic emanating from the point A here will be just X plus CT equal A, right? And the discontinuity in the data here will propagate along this characteristic and this continuity in the data here will propagate along this characteristic. It cannot propagate quicker. It cannot propagate like this. It cannot propagate like this. It will be precisely propagating along the characteristics. So somehow the other data, which is just in this interval, will be just propagating along the characteristics here or with the speed smaller than characteristics. So on some curves between the curves that that the, that has the slope like uh, this curve here or like this curve here. So somehow 
if something can be affected by the data given at the interval between A and B, it is this region. Everything outside this region, like this purple stuff, will be not affected because the data cannot propagate quicker than along the characteristics. So somehow the, date, the red data can only affect the white crossed region and this region is called region of influence of the interval A and B. So we discussed two situations. We, we were asking which data affect this point and the data that are affecting this point are the data on the interval which is the base of characteristic triangle and the reverse question which region in xt plane is affected by the data given on an interval and t equals zero is just the region between the characteristics emanating to the left from point A and to the right from point B. Okay, so we have two notions. One of them is just domain of dependence. Which is this interval here. So there's domain of dependence of the point. And the other one is just, the other notion is just region of influence in the xt plane of a data given at an interval at t equals zero. We will discuss these notions and we will use information given in this part of the lecture later when we be discussing something which is called the graphical method of obtaining solutions to the Cauchy problem of one dimensional wave equation. This will be later, but now I want to generalize this D'Alembert formula that we have here for the Cauchy problem of a wave equation which is non-homogeneous. So now, so non-homogeneous means that there will be some function, given function on the right hand side, right hand side standing. So now I'm passing to the generalization of the D'Alembert formula for the non-homogeneous wave equation. Okay. So, what problem we are considering now? We are considering a PDE, which is like our wave equation before, but now we admit that the right-hand side of this equation has non-zero term, which is a given function of x and t. So from now on, we will be just considering for a while. From now, for a while, we'll be considering this equation with a given function f. And we will be interested in the Cauchy problem. Namely, we'll be asking about a solution u as a function of x and t such that it satisfies initial conditions u of x and 0 is some given function f of x and the time derivative at time equals 0 is some given function of g of x and this data is given for every x between minus infinity and plus infinity and we consider the equation and we are looking for a solution for x 
between minus infinity and plus infinity and t greater than zero. So the data is given at t equals zero and we are looking for a solution for t equal greater than zero so in all of this region. So we are looking for u as a function of x and t in here, in the upper half plane of x and t. Okay? So for a while we'll be just concerned with this problem. Find a solution or tell if the solution exists for the following problem. Solution to this equation with these initial conditions in the upper half plane. Okay? So let's start with a warm up. Let us prove the following fact. This Cauchy problem, given by 1 and 2, admits no more than one solution. In other words, if you give me two solutions, they are the same. Let us prove it. So suppose that we have two different solutions. So let u1, u1 of xt, be one solution of 1, 2, and u2, being u2 of xt, be another solution. Okay? So these are, assume that these are two solutions of 1 and 2. So in particular, what this means is that both of these functions satisfy. So ui, where i is equal 1 to 2, ui tt minus c squared ui xx, where i is 1 to 2, satisfies the same equation f of xt. And moreover, ui for i equal 1 to 2 at x0 is f of x. And ui, where i is 1 or t or 2, the time derivative at x equal 0 is g of x. So suppose that we have two such solutions. So using them, I can define a function u to be u1 minus u2. So I am defining a function u of x and t to be u1 of x and t minus u2 of x and t. Okay. Recall that this u t t minus c squared u x x I will denote by D'Alembertian on u where D'Alembertian operator is just d square t to squared minus Okay. So now I assume that I have two solutions of the Cauchy problem 1, 2. So this u1 and u2 satisfy these equations. And now I define a new function of x of t, which is just the difference between u1 and u2. And now on this function u, I apply my D'Alembertian. Okay. So in other words, I calculate u sub t t minus c squared u sub x x. But u is u1 minus u2. So actually what I'm doing, I'm just applying u1, this tt on u1 minus u2, 
and subtracting from it c squared times u which is u1 minus u2 sub x sub x so both operators tt and xx are linear so it is the same as applying x tt on u1 first minus applying tt on u2 minus c squared u1 and on this xx is applied minus u2 and on this xx is applied but now if i just <clears throat> look at this term and this term this u1 tt minus c square u1 xx but u1 tt minus c square u1 xx satisfies the inhomogeneous uh, wave equation so this red term will be just equal to f of x and t and now if i just look at the green terms so it is minus u2 2 plus c squared u2 xx then is the same as minus and now minus the Lambertian this one applied on u2 and the Lambertian applied on u2 is again f of xt so this minus f x and t but this is nothing else but zero so in other words if u1 and u2 are two solutions of the non-homogeneous Cauchy problem then the function u i defined here satisfies the wave equation so d on u is equal to zero okay moreover if i just now consider u and what is the value of u at point x at time zero it is the same it is the same as asking of u1 at x0 minus u2 of x0 but u1 at x0 is f of x and u2 of x0 is f of x so it is f of x minus f of x which is 0 moreover so that's another piece of information and moreover you time derivative of my function u at x at time zero is a time derivative of function u1 u1 sub t at x zero minus u2 sub t at x zero but u1 at x zero sub t is g of x and also u2 sub t at x zero is g of x so it is g of x minus g of x which is also zero so actually what i have just proven if you give me two if you give me two different solutions u1 and u2 of the cauchy problem one two then the function u being u1 minus u2 satisfies the wave the homogeneous wave equation u to utt minus c squared uxx equals zero and it satisfies initial conditions u of x zero equal zero and u sub t of x zero equal zero so by the d'alembert formula at every point xt u of xt is equal to one half f of f which is zero at point x plus ct plus f which is zero f at point x minus ct plus integral from 
x minus ct to x plus ct of g, which is 0, of s, ds, which means that it is 0. I have just proven that given u1 and u2, u must be solution of the homogeneous Cauchy problem, and this homogeneous Cauchy problem by D'Alembert formula, because of 0 here and 0 here, is just given by a function u of x of t equals 0. But u of x of t is equal u1 of x of t minus u2 of x of t. So therefore, u1 of x of t at every point x and t over on the half, upper, upper half plane is equal to u2 of x of t at every point. So if there exist two solutions, they necessarily must be the same. So I have just proven that if a Cauchy problem for, for this non-homogeneous equation admits a solution, this solution must be unique. There is no more than one. Okay? So now, the question is, can I find sort of this kind of formula for this kind of Cauchy problem. So now we have non-zero f on the right hand side. Okay. So here is our Cauchy problem. We have the inhomogeneous wave equation and the initial conditions that u at t equals zero at any point x should be a given function f of x and the time derivative of u at time equals zero on any point of x should be equal to the value of a function g of x, okay? And we are looking for a solution for x between minus infinity and plus infinity and t greater than zero, whereas the initial conditions are just given for every x on a line t equals zero, okay? And we want to find a sort of d'Alembert formula for this Cauchy problem. For getting this formula, we need some preparations. So now I just bring a canon, which is a result from calculus free, which is called Green's formula. So I recall Green's formula. The Green's formula is a formula relating an integral of a function over a domain in x t plane and an integral over a boundary of this of this domain. So there's a curve here, which is a boundary of the domain. And this Green's formula was as follows. Suppose that you have, a, you have two functions, q as a function of x and t on the plane, and p as a function of x and t on the plane. And now, suppose that you want to calculate uh, an integral over this domain of the function which is just made in terms of q and p by taking x derivative of q and subtracting from it t derivative of p. And suppose that you want to integrate this function over this domain. So it is the integration of dt dx over domain omega. And Green's formula relates this double integral to a one-dimensional integral over the boundary of the domain, which is just this curve, bounding the domain. And this integral is from the function here were derivatives of q and p, and this thing, according to Green's formula, is equal to 
this integral. Okay. So this is the thing that I hope that you learned at calculus free. Okay. And now I recall my goal. My goal is to find sort of d'Alembert formula for this Cauchy problem for non-homogeneous wave equation. So recall the geometry. We are at x t plane and we want to find the value of the solution of our Cauchy problem at point x0 t0. We know that for the homogeneous wave equation when f was 0 the important object here was this characteristic triangle made by means of characteristics, right? So there was this characteristics x minus ct equals x0 minus ct0, and there was this characteristic x plus, plus ct equal x0 plus ct0, so therefore this point here was x0 minus ct0, and this point here was x0 plus ct0. So this, you remember, there was this characteristic triangle in the case of homogeneous wave equation. So now we, we will make use of it in the case of inhomogeneous wave equation. So we want to find the value of a solution u of xt of this Cauchy problem at the point x0, t0. So first we draw the characteristic triangle for the point x0, t0. This triangle has a base. It has left uh, face here and the right face here. And now I consider the as now I will be using Green's formula for the region omega, which will be precisely this characteristic triangle. So my omega now will be the characteristic triangle associated with this point x0, t0. Okay. So I say that I will be using Green's formula. So Green's formula involves the domain, the boundary of the domain. So the domain is just the triangle. The boundary of the domain are just the faces of this triangle, oriented like this. So what is the function? What are the Q's and P's? So I will start with an assumption that I have a solution U of the Cauchy problem for the inhomogeneous equation. So I have U that satisfies UTT minus C squared UXX equal F of XT, right? And now what I, so suppose that I have such U. Assume that I have U satisfying one, which is my inhomogeneous wave equation. So now what I do, I will apply the double integration over the characteristic triangle delta of this equation. So I will just apply the double integration here on both sides, right? Actually, I put 
negative sign here and negative sign here. So what I will get, starting from the right hand side, I will get that negative of double integration over the triangle delta of a function f of x and t is equal to integral of c squared uxx minus utt over dt dx also here should be dt dx over the triangle and now I write this what is under this integral as c squared of u sub x x minus u sub t t and I integrate this thing over dt dx, right? And now I have this thing as q and this thing as p. So I will just take as a q c squared u sub x and as p u sub t. Okay? And now I apply Green's formula, this one, to this Q and to this P. So it is Q sub X minus P sub T. So it is the same as integral over the boundary of my characteristic triangle, which is just the red part here. The green part here and blue part here. So it is the integral over a curve red, blue, green, which I denote by gamma, of what? According to green formula, it should be p dx, but p is u sub t dx plus q, which is c squared u sub x dt. Okay, so that's what green's formula tells me. The green's formula tells me that the integral of my inhomogeneity over the surface of my characteristic tri triangle with negative sign is precisely equal to the integral of this expression along this red, blue, green curve. Okay? So let us calculate this integral. So this integral splits into three integrals. There will be integral over the base of the triangle of this thing plus integral over the right face of the triangle which is blue plus integral over the green face of the triangle of the function ut dx plus c squared ux dt. Okay, so actually now we have to calculate three integrals. The integral over the red region of this function, the integral over the blue region of this function, and the integral over the green region of this function. So, here we go. First, we calculate this. So, here is our picture, remember? Here is 
x0 minus ct0, here is x0 plus ct0, and here is x0 t0. Right? Here is x, and here is t. Okay? So now we have to calculate this thing along the red line here. So what are the coordinates of this red line? t on the red line is 0, so in particular dt is equal to 0. So this is 0, and what we have here is just we have to calculate integral over this red region of u sub t where along x axis when t is equal to 0 of dx, right? And what, what does it mean b? b, this integral over dx, goes from x0 minus ct0 to x0 plus ct0. But now we know that our u, I assume that our u is a solution of the Cauchy problem. So therefore, u sub t at t equals 0 is g of x. So I just insert this thing, because u is solution of the Cauchy problem, this thing is nothing but g of x, so the this integral is simply equal to So that's good to know, that's the first one. Now we need to calculate the integral over the blue region. Aha! But what is a blue region? Blue region is a line and is actually, actually a characteristic line. And this characteristic line has equation x plus ct equals x0 plus ct0, right? So along this blue line, if we take d on both sides, we will get that dx plus c is constant, dt is equal to 0, therefore dx is equal minus c dt, or what is the same, dt is equal minus 1 over c dx, okay? So along my blue line, dx is equal minus c dt, and dt is equal minus 1 over c dx. So let's replace dx by minus c dt because it's valid along the blue line. So it will be integral u sub t, and now dx, which is minus c dt. And now there is c squared here, ux. And we put dt to be minus 1 over c dx. I did nothing, but I just replaced this by the rules that about dx and dt along the blue line. So this should be calculated along the blue line. And we can pull out c from here and actually negative c. So we can pull out negative c, there will be integral, and what will remain here will be ut dt plus u sub x dx along the blue integral, right? But now if we just look at this formula here, this formula here,
suppose that we have a function u of x and t and we want to calculate its differential du so it's nothing pi but u sub t dt plus u sub x dx but this thing is precisely the thing that stays here so actually i can write this thing which is under the integral as integral over du in front of this it was minus c and it should be this integral should be performed along r now first of all integral over d of a function is equal to the difference between the value of the function at the end of the trip which is here negative the value of the function at the beginning of the trip which is here so it is minus c and now value of the function u at the end of the trip which is just x0 t0 negative value of the function u at the beginning of the trip which is at point x0 plus c t0 at time equals 0 but the value of my function at t equals 0 is given by our initial value conditions which are given here value of u at t equals 0 is equal f of x so we want to have in here value of a function u at time 0 at point x0 ct0 so this thing is equal to f of x0 plus ct0 so all in all this integral then is equal to negative c u at point x0 t0 negative f of x0 plus c t0 okay so that's we calculated this integral which is this we calculated this integral which is that so now we have to calculate the integral of these guys along the green curve so let's do it so integral of ut dx plus c squared ux dt evaluated along the green thing when the travel goes in this direction because we are traveling like this first we traveled like this now it's tra then we along the blue curve we travel like this and now we are traveling like this so <clears throat> we let's calculate so now the green curve is nothing but the characteristic x minus ct equals x0 minus ct0 so along the green line we have x minus ct is equal to x0 minus ct0 so in particular the x minus c dt is equal to 0 so the x is equal to c dt so let's plug this thing or alternatively dt is equal to 1 over c dx into this expression so there will be integral over the green thing of ut dx but dx is c dt plus c squared ux dt but dt is 1 over c dx so again, by the same argument, we can pull out C and there will be integral over the green line from ut dt plus ux dx 
which by the same argument that we used previously is just du but now we integrate over the l thing All right so this integral is equal to c and now the value of u at the end of the trouble travel so it is at the point x 0 minus ct 0 at t equals 0 so it is u x 0 minus ct 0 at 0 negative u at the beginning of the trouble travel which is x0 t0 okay but u at the value of 0 as a solution to the Cauchy problem is given by value of a function f at point x0 minus ct0 so this thing is nothing but c of f of x0 minus ct0 minus u of x0 t0 like this okay so we calculated the last integral here okay which is this why i am happy with this so remember what i have so far I have that if u is a solution of my Cauchy problem of the inhomogeneous wave equation with inhomogeneity given by the function f, then the double integral of this function over the characteristic triangle passing through the point x0 t0 is equal to the sum of these integrals. But we just calculated these three integrals so let's write everything together so now we have that negative of double integral over the characteristic triangle of the inhomogeneity of my wave equation recall it was here is equal to the sum of these three integrals b over b r and l and we calculated them here so this thing is equal to so let's put them in some order so it is sum of these guys these guys and these guys so the first two things that we can add which have the same sign is just this and that so we can write it as c times f of x0 plus ct0 plus f of x0 minus ct0. Okay, so we just added these terms. Now there is this guy that stays here, which is integral from x0 minus ct0 to x0 plus ct0 of g of x dx so we added this guy what remained is just this term and this term they both come with the same sign minus c so there are minus 2c u of x0 t0 so that's this long calculation gives me this identity. What this identity means? This identity means that if I have a solution u of xt of the Cauchy problem for my inhomogeneous uh, wave equation with inhomogeneity given by function f, then the value of this uh, solution at point x0 t0 is related to values of initial conditions 
this function g tells us how the time derivative of the data looks at t equals 0. And this function f tells us how the solution at t equals 0 looks like. So this u value of u at x0, t0 is related to g, f, and the inhomogeneity. So solving this equation for u at point x0, t0, we get is equal f of x0 plus ct0 plus f of x0 minus ct0 divided by 2. Then there will be 1 half over 2c of this integral x0 minus ct0 x0 plus ct0 of g of x dx. And eventually, we plus double integral over the entire characteristic triangle of the inhomogeneity on the TTX. This thing looks familiar, isn't it? Look, if our Cauchy problem, which was was for homogeneous equation, namely if f of x of t was identically zero, then this term here, the new term here, would be not present. And the formula for the value of the solution at point x0, t0, would be precisely d'Alembert formula for homogeneous Cauchy problem. Here, we generalize this formula for the inhomogeneous Cauchy problem. The difference between new formula and the original d'Alembert formula for the homogeneous problem is the appearance of this double integral over the characteristic triangle of the inhomogeneity f of x of t. And this term requires integration of the inhomogeneity over the entire characteristic triangle. So this is also called d'Alembert formula. But this time, this D'Alembert formula is for non-homogeneous wave equation. Okay. So what is the difference between inhomogeneous case and homogeneous case? Recall that in the homogeneous case, if we have point x0, t0, the value at this point x0, t0 of the function u was only affected by the data at the base of the characteristic trend between x0 minus ct0 and x0 plus ct0, right? So that's the homogeneous case, or the case when f is identical is equal to zero. What's the difference? So the formula then didn't have this squared or rectangled term with double integration over f because f was zero. But now when f is non equal zero, if we just plot what's going on in x t plane 
and how the value of a function, which is a solution, is affected at point x0, t0 by the initial data, if we draw the characteristic triangle, we see that there is a part in the formula defining the solution that is depending only on the base of the triangle, but there is also there is also a part in the formula that depends on entire triangle because to get the full value of x0, t0, not only the data from the red interval are needed, but also the, the entire information about what's going on with the, with the inhomogeneity in the characteristic triangle. I end this lecture remarking that we derive this D'Alembert formula for the non-homogeneous case, assuming that we have a solution for the Cauchy problem. So what remains to be checked is if the solution obtained by our formula is really a solution of the Cauchy problem we started with. You can check it yourself that it is true.